morning, everyone, and welcome to our Proceed CEO webinar series. My name is Shannon Shaw, and I am a supervisor of operations at Prestige PEO and your host this morning. Today, we will be reviewing our Prestige PEO renewal portal, as well as mass mutual product offerings. I am joined today by Kathleen Sullivan, Director of Benefits at Prestige PEO, and John Manning, Insurance and Financial Advisor at Mass Mutual. Our webinar viewers are automatically muted, but we encourage you to utilize the chat feature for any questions you may have, and we will address them at the end of the webinar if time allows. If your question is not answered, we will follow up with you shortly after the webinar concludes. The webinar is also being recorded and will be posted on our Open Enrollment Resource Center at www.prestigepeo.com backslash open enrollment so that you can refer to it at any time. And now I want to turn over the mic to Kathleen, who will walk us through the renewal portal. Welcome, Kathleen. Thank you, Shannon. Can you hear me okay? I hear you just fine. Okay, great, great. Okay, so I see some familiar uh, email addresses in the participants lodge. So uh, welcome and thank you for attending. For those of you I don't know yet, I'm Kathleen Sullivan. I'm one of the directors here at Prestige. The open enrollment season for 2023 is beginning. So we're very excited. We have some new products this year. We have some upgrades to our portal and we're hoping for a smooth process. Gonna move right into today's agenda. Okay, so this webinar is for client managers and brokers, decision makers at the company. So it should last about an hour. The first 25 minutes or so, roughly, I'm going to go through the renewal portal. And then I'm going to take a few questions at the end. And then I'm going to pass it to my partner today, John Manning, so he can talk about a very unique and excellent product whole life product that's offered to prestige employees, and then he'll take a few questions. Uh, like Shannon said, uh, the participants are muted. So please type your questions into the side navigation panel and we'll do our best um, in those two breaks. Thank you. Okay. So today's, today's process. Um, overall, the process starts with us releasing the renewals and those are going to be ready starting next week and probably carry over into the week of September 4th. So the week of August 28th and the week of September 4th, uh, brokers and clients will be notified that renewals are ready and be invited to the portal to see those renewals. The first phase is the renewals are, are released and the clients with the help of their brokers and our business development team and their benefit specialists can go in and build models and make decisions for what they wanna do this year. At the same time, we have this open enrollment resource center. So if you see that middle and that's already open. So the open enrollment resource center on the prestige PEO website is open and available. Uh, on there, you can see uh, there's a broker guide to the portal. There's a client manager's guide to the portal. There's uh, videos and things for how things work. There's information on our new products. Uh, it's a great resource center, so please avail yourself of that. And then the last phase to open enrollment is after decisions are made, um, we open up the portal for the employees. And then the employees go through and make their decisions and changes that they want to make for open enrollment, which is effective 11-1, 2023. Some key features. So everything in one place. This renewal portal was introduced last year. It was a big deal for us. It's a great, um, it's a great option for clients and, and it helps us a lot, but we've made some upgrades. So since last year, we got some feedback from our brokers, from our clients internally too, and we made some changes. And I think those changes are very positive and that's what I'm gonna share today. Also just go through how it works all together because we do have plenty of new clients and brokers this year that may have never seen this renewal quarter yet. 
on this portal, um, clients are going to be able to see their current enrollment. So how many employees are currently actively covered in medical, in dental, in vision. Uh, they're going to see their rates from last year. They're going to see the new rates. They're going to see their contribution strategy from last year and be able to build a model for their contribution strategy this year. Brokers will also have access to this portal and our business development team will have access so they can go in and see. Clients can submit these renewal decisions right through the portal, which is great. And then benefit specialists can see those decisions and work with the clients too. You can tell where things are uh, all the way through the process. So we have the status showing on the main screen, which I'll show you as we go through. Questions should be directed to the benefit specialist. So as you're going through this and you're working with your broker and brokers, as you're going through this and working with your clients, don't hesitate to reach out to your benefit specialist. They're there and waiting for your call, happy to help and to go through this process with you. Uh, that's the way it works the best, okay? So let's get started and dive right into the portal. First question we get is, how do we get there? How do we get to the portal? Now, brokers, you go through Prestige PEO Broker Benefits Portal at Okta.com. That's your access. Uh, many of you had that access last year. That's still in effect. You may need to reset a password to get in, but new brokers, you'll get an invitation through there. And then when you go into the portal, you'll be able to see all your groups. Client managers, this is a little more simple for you because you're gonna go right through our Prestige Pro system that you're used to going through all the time. So you're gonna sign in the way you normally would and that'll take you to your main screen and you're gonna go right to the search box and type in renewal portal. That's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. Now brokers, you'll see all your groups and client managers, you'll see all the groups affiliated for you. So maybe just one group because you may be just one company covered here with us, but if there's multiple, you'll see all of them, all of them that you have access to. From this screen, you can either go right to the group and click review, and that's going to take you to the, to the dashboard, or you can use the search box and type in the group name you're looking for. This is what the dashboard looks like, and this is the information that you're going to have. So I'll go through the different parts so you know what you're looking at, but it is very user friendly. And we're very proud of this portal. Okay. If at any time you want to go back to see the groups, all of them, that hyperlink in the top left corner that's highlighted in red will take you back. Also, the client name in the top will take you back. So if you need to come out of the screen and go to a different group, that's how you're going to get back. You'll see Betty Benefits. <laughs> Shout out to my grandma. <laughs> um, that's going to be your actual benefit specialist. We don't have anybody here working named Betty, but um, we do have Francine and Marilyn and uh, several benefit specialists. One of the things, one of the feedback, some of the feedback we got last year was, especially for brokers, I have several groups with you. I'm not sure which specialist handles which group. Now you will be able to tell pretty easily right here on this main screen, you'll see the benefit specialist who's handling that group. Okay, the dashboard components. So first, the full rate menus. So when you come into this portal, to the dashboard, what's important is we have the full rate menus. So if you're covered on Oxford, New York, there's roughly 18 plans that are offered to your group. You probably chose three to five of those plans to be offered to your employees. But as you're making decisions about whether or not you wanna add plans or change the plans you're offering, it's gonna be very helpful for you to be able to see those full rate menus. 
right? Because that's going to show you all the plans and all the details of the plans, the co-payments, the deductibles, uh, things like that. So we have those full rate menus available right there. And if you click in there, you're going to be able to see last year's and this year's. And those menus are going to be available in both PDF and Excel. So that's another change upgrade from last year. Last year, uh, it was PDF and people like to work in Excel. It's a little easier. So we're going to have those available. Let's see last year and this year. All right, let's get rolling with the, the meat of this meeting and start working on how we build models. So your current benefit costs are going to show to the left in this box. Your proposed benefit costs, right? So the renewal and as you build out a model, a contribution strategy, that's going to show in that box to the right. And then there'll always be a summary at the bottom. And that'll be more obvious as we go. But this is what it looks like initially when you go in. There is this little action bar up to the left corner. The three lines, some people call it a hamburger. Um, if you wanted to, if you click that, it's going to widen the screen. So you have that menu with the, with the full rate menus there. If you click that little button to the left, it's just a little trick. It'll widen the screen. It's helpful if you're working on a smaller laptop and you can't see everything as clear. So that's just a little uh, trick. All right, so creating a contribution model, because that's what we're doing, right? So clients are getting their renewal, they're looking at what they offer now, what their costs are, and they need to be able to build out and see what's gonna make sense for them for the renewal season. So let's dive right into that. The button you're gonna click is right there. Create new contribution model. Now you can name this anything you want. When you click it, you're going to get this create contribution model code. If you're a broker, maybe you want to put your name in here. If you're a client manager, maybe you want to use your name. Maybe you're just going to say model one, or maybe you're going to name it based on the contribution strategy you're using. Like maybe you're going to do the 80% model. You're going to build one where you show what it costs if the client pays 80% of the cost of medical. So you can name it whatever you want, um, but that's helpful right there. And then create. So that's going to take you to this summary page. And this is important, the summary page. So down the left side, you see the different benefit classes. Now each group is unique. This is just a sample group. Um, but in this one, we have an owner's class, we have a supervisor's class, and we have an all-employees class. And then, as you see across the way, you can see how many employees in the owner's class are covered on medical. And the supervisors and employees, and then dental and vision. You can see the current employer costs. And once you build out a model, you can see the estimated cost for the employer. Now... This next feature is the big feature this year. You see that green button that says export up in the right hand corner. This was the biggest request last year. While we love people working in the portal and we think it's great and it's excellent for being able to build, sometimes you're a client manager or you're a broker and you need to be able to export this so that you can share it without actually having somebody come to the portal. So we did that. We have this export button and this will always be on the summary. So you can export it right now before you've made any contributions strategy or typed anything in. And you can also export it after you build models and it'll hold that information. This is what it will look like. So it's going to export into an Excel spreadsheet. And the summary page will be the first tab, and then there'll be a tab for each benefit class. And you'll see the whole renewal the same way that you see it in the portal. And then you'll be able to work inside of this Excel spreadsheet 
to work on your strategies or to save things, right? So once you've decided on your contribution model, maybe you want to save a copy of it. Um, we think this is, this to me is the most important new feature. Okay, so let's begin working on the contribution models. First thing you got to do is pick the class that you're going to work on. In this case, I grabbed the all employees class. So as you can see, same as the Excel spreadsheet, we see the, the current rates, the renewal rates, and then we have that whole right side to work in to build our models and figure out our contribution strategies. New feature, rate change. So this is a question we get every year, mostly from clients and also from brokers. How much did the premiums go up or down? And I wish it was down more often, but it's more often up. Um, but there's always a question of how much is that percent increase? So that's showing it to you. And in the portal, you're going to see that. And also you see it in the, in the Excel spreadsheet. So you, you can tell by tier, by plan, how much the rates increased. We have three buttons across the top that are important. Add or terminate plans, set max medical con plan contribution, and that's important, set max medical plan contribution. And then this brand new feature, contribution shortcuts. Now past the export, being able to export the renewal, this is also uh, my favorite of the new features in our renewal portal. So the contribution shortcut is for clients who have a very easy strategy, right? So maybe you're doing 100% contribution for the owners and a simple 80% and you're not going to change that and you're not adding any plans and you're not terminating any plans. Then this contribution shortcut might be a help for you. I'll show you what the features are. So you have a choice here. You can do keep same contribution percentage as the previous year. You can keep the same contribution dollar amount as the previous year, or you can split the increase evenly between employer and employee. Now, if you click one of these buttons here and you hit update contribution, it's going to populate the whole grid for that particular class. Right? So in the past, even if it was 100% employer contribution, you had to go through that renewal grid and type in 100% down the line. Now this will take you literally two seconds to do. So if we type in update contribution and we say keep percentage, that grid will populate in full. Let's go back to see the other options now. So if we don't use the contribution shortcut, because maybe we want to add a couple of plans and, and we have some exciting plans that I want to talk about, um, we're going to go back to the add or terminate plans button. Now, when we hit this, you're going to see the plans currently offered. They'll be all checked off. And then you'll have the option of checking some of the other plans. Now remember the menus were in the beginning on the left side of the dashboard so you can see what plan four really looks like or plan five looks like. You see the rates in here but if you want the details to the plan they're in the menus and you can click whatever plans you want to add. If you want to add them just to see what they'll look like you can do that too. Up at the top it's medical, dental, and vision. Now, in the portal this year, if you don't offer dental through Prestige right now, or you don't offer vision, you're still going to see the dental and the vision plans. Even if you do offer those plans, you're going to see the other plans available. And the one I wanted to draw attention to is vision. So in the past, we've had UHC vision, which is great. They have this Pectera network. They have uh, Warby Parker. But we've been asked for better vision plans, if we could have those. So we got them. So we have a, an enhanced 
UHC vision plan this year, and we also have Davis vision plans. So in the portal, in add plans, you'll be able to add vision plans to the plans offered to your employees, possibly more attractive vision plans. And you'll also be able to see the, the details of those in the menus. Okay, back to the medical. So these are the plans offered. If you're gonna add a plan, you wanna add it first. And then if you wanna terminate a plan, it's important. In this portal, when you wanna take away a plan, so say I don't wanna offer plan three anymore to my employees. If there are employees currently showing covered on plan three, the portal's gonna ask you where to move them. Now it's not physically gonna move those employees in the main system. So it's not gonna automatically give Sally a new plan. It's only for this purpose of figuring out your contribution strategy. We don't wanna lose employees in your numbers. So it's just a matter of estimating costs. So if we get rid of that plan three, it's gonna ask you where to move those employees. What plan do you wanna move them into so you can see the costs? Okay, and then you're saving changes. And then we can move on. So next we're gonna talk about just using the, the main system for monthly contributions. And you can do that by percent or dollar amount. The percentages, if you click those Red check boxes, you can put in a percent. You can also put in the dollar amount and you can go back and forth between each contract type. But if you do percentage, it's gonna automatically calculate the percentage off of the new rates. And it's gonna show you the employer and the employee costs. Same thing for dollar amount. So you check all those boxes, then you can type in the numbers you wanna do for those contributions, and it's gonna show you the costs. It's also gonna calculate it at the bottom of the page based on how many employees you have in those plans. All right, setting the max medical contribution button. So I like this feature too, but this was in place last year. So setting the max medical contribution, this is for companies who have a defined contribution. Maybe you know exactly how much you're contributing to the medical plans, and this is for the medical plans only, this button, uh, different than the contribution shortcut, which is for all the plans. When you set the medical plan contribution, you can click that button and then type in the amounts. So for single, for couple, for single parent, for family, and this is gonna override and populate all of your medical plans when you hit set max contribution. So you'll see it and it'll fill out the grid. Now sometimes, and for some of our clients, they have a complicated contribution strategy. Maybe they wanna do 50% of every plan, but they don't wanna go beyond plan two, for, for example, right? So we could use the set max medical plan contribution to do that, and I'll show you how. There's a little animation coming. So you would go to plan two, put in the 50%, take those numbers and use them to set the max monthly contribution. Now you're almost done, but the plans that are less than plan two, we still only wanna contribute 50% of. So you change those and now you have your grid filled out for your medical. So you can use the set max contribution that way too. Okay, once we have one class done, we're gonna go back to the left and click on the next benefit class and then go through the same process of figuring out what we wanna do for contributions. When all the classes are done, it'll take you to a summary. So we can see at the bottom here of this page, 
owners, supervisors, employees, those are all completed now for contributions. Maybe we want to build another model and try a different version. So we can do that too. We're going to go create new contribution model and you can create up to three models in here and save them in the portal. You can also go back and edit any models that you've already created by clicking that edit contribution model. To review your costs, the summary page is always going to give you the information. It's also where you can submit your contribution model. And again, you see that export button. So if this is a model that you want to show uh, to your decision makers, or you want to go over and discuss, you can export it right here into that Excel grid and share that. You can go back to the home and you can see it spelled out here too. So if we go back to that home, by clicking the little house and home up at the top, you're going to see the plans and kind of spelled out. Again, new feature is you see the company contribution goes up 13%. So it's giving you the percentage of the increase for the employer contribution and the employee contribution and the total. In the bottom underneath, you can see that all of the owners, supervisors, and all employees class are now completed. So you would be able to submit And that's pretty easy. Now, I didn't mention it, but as you're going through and building those models, you want to make sure you keep hitting save draft. So that's important because nothing will save unless you do that, unless you hit save draft. Okay, that's how you keep what you have. You see the submit contribution model right there at the bottom, highlighted in red. If you click that, that's going to send your renewal off to your benefit specialist. They're going to review it, make any updates that they need to on our side, and then they're going to publish that renewal. And then we go into the next phase, which is where employees are invited to go to their own portal and see their own plans and make their decisions. So I hope this was very helpful. Hope everybody has a good uh, handle on the renewal portal. This, what I just went through, we have a about a 15 minute video up on our portal on the open enrollment section, not our portal, our website, sorry, <laughs> up on the website. Um, under open enrollment, you'll see three sections. You'll see client managers, client employees, and brokers. And there's videos to go through the portal so you can see and goes through everything that I did. It's also broken down in chapters. So if you just wanted to see how do I submit, it'll show you just that. You can jump right to that chapter. So we're, we're trying to make this as easy as possible. All right, with that, Shannon, I'm going to ask if there are any questions that I can answer before I pass this over to John Manning. Thank you so much, Kathleen. That was extremely thorough, and I see that the portal has improved since last year. Um, there are a couple of questions that I see have come in. One of the questions is um, how employers should proceed if they want to renew on the same basis, if they still need to create a new contribution model. So I think the question was if they want to keep things the same, do they still have to create a contribution model? Is that what you said? Yes. So the easiest way for them to do that is to use that contribution shortcut. But yes, they still need to go in uh, to the portal and I would use the contribution shortcut. And then if they're keeping, you now the rates are gonna change likely. So you do wanna see what they're going to. And then the employer can use one of those contribution shortcut buttons to speed things along and populate that grid and then hit submit. So they do still need to go through the portal. Um, when they say they want to, they don't want to make any changes, we may not know what that means, right? So I may not know if that means you want to keep all your percentages the same or you want to keep and only spend the same exact dollar amount. 
So definitely go through the portal. And I hope that answers the question. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question came from a, a broker, what the link is for brokers to access the renewal system. Um, and brokers will receive an email from Prestige PEO Broker Benefits Portal when the portal is open. Is that right, Kathleen? Yes. So we go through Okta. So the brokers go through the Okta website. And if you're a broker who had access last year, you have access still. You could go in there now and just reset your password, but you won't see any of the renewals because we haven't we haven't synced everything yet and we haven't loaded all the renewals into the portal. For new brokers, you're going to get an email. Actually, all brokers will get an email because we want to let you know when the renewals are ready. So we're going to send emails and then you'll be able to log in through that Okta, same as last year, and then you'll have access to all of your groups. Uh, another question that came in is a uh, question question. The first one is, are the plan designs changing or are all the benefits and maximum out of pockets the same? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question. Um, we are working through the renewal. There are not big changes, but there may be some slight changes. Um, there's no changes to the dental. We added vision. But on the medical plans, depending on what platform you have, there could be some slight changes. And we're going to go into detail on what those changes are with the renewal letter that you get in your email. So we're going to describe those so that you know what they are. And then you can also always talk to your benefit specialist. But there could be slight changes to a few plans. Nothing dramatic. Um, no, no big, big changes. Good question. That's good to know, Kathleen. Uh, the remaining questions, either John will address or uh, we'll see if there's time at the end to address them. Now, John will share the products that Mass Mutual offers during open enrollment season. Take it away, John. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for allowing me the time uh, to share with you this program um, that Mass Mutual and Prestige have teamed up to offer all the employees. It's a unique opportunity and Prestige really uh, stepped out and is giving something to somebody that a lot of the other PEOs do not offer. So getting right into it, Mass Mutual and Prestige is offering you know, all employees and employers a unique opportunity to enhance their personal protection and retirement plan. A whole life insurance policy from Mass Mutual can help protect an individual's wealth act as a supplemental retirement strategy that is tax efficient and generate and offer access to another savings vehicle. So I'm just gonna talk before I get into the slides for a couple of moments and give you the overview. So the program offers guaranteed issue and simplified issue individually owned whole life insurance policies that grow cash value with guarantees. So there'll never be any medical or financial underwriting at all. There's no tests, there's no medical exams, there's no check for pre-existing conditions at all. The first 10,000 up to $100,000 of coverage is guaranteed no matter what issues you may have. So if you have diabetes or if you have something else, or if you have something else and you think that you may not be able to qualify for insurance, we guarantee you the first 100,000 no matter what. Additional coverage from 100,000 to 250,000, which is the maximum per year, simply requires answering a few simple questions and will have no bearing on the first 100,000. I'll go over those questions in a little bit. And the offer is repeated annually. So every year on the policy anniversary, an employee can re-enroll through the simplified issue process for another policy to add to the first, the first one. So conceivably, after four years of buying $250,000, you could have a million dollars of mass mutual um, life insurance. And whole life works like this. If you decided to buy that $100,000 policy, and let's just say that your um, contribution per paycheck is $50 and you get paid twice a month, so it's $100 a month. Those premium contributions are gonna go into your cash value. So as, you, as the deduction comes out of your paycheck and we get the um, contribution to your policy every month. That $100 a month is going to go into your cash value month after month, year after year. So several years down the line, that cash value could have accumulated 
let's say $10,000 for all those monthly contributions. And that would force the death benefit that started at 100,000 to go up also, because as the cash value increases, it means the death benefit is gonna increase also. So if you have 100,000, started with a $100,000 policy, and after a number of years, you've got $10,000 saved in the cash value, that means that the death benefit will now be somewhere around 110,000 also. And that money is accessible to you, tax-free and penalty-free forever. Um, if you needed $5,000 for any emergency or just to go on vacation or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You can simply call me up or go online and say, I need $5,000 from my cash value. Those dollars would be sent to you, um, to your bank in 24 to 48 hours. And what would happen, the cash value that was 10 would go down to 5,000. The death benefit that had grown to 110 would go back down to 105. There's no 1099, there's no income tax, there's no penalty, there's no nothing. It's just like going to the bank and taking out some money. Um, and then the next paycheck will send you another 5,000 deduct from your paycheck. You can pay that, that 5,000 back to the policy, you don't have to. It's there for your living benefit. Um, okay. So a couple of quick little facts about life insurance, as you would imagine, mass mutual studies this um, very seriously. So almost half of US households have no life insurance at all. Um, nearly a third only have group life insurance, which is, which is good while you're working. But if you leave the job or if you retire or you take a new job, those group insurance policies usually go away. They're very hard to port, and if they are, they get quite expensive. Um, again, nearly a third uh, of Americans say they actually need more insurance, but they haven't got to it yet. Maybe they don't want to take a medical exam, or maybe they just don't like the long process. That's what makes this one so easy. And again, 60% of employees like to buy their benefits through work. That's what <laughs> Prestige does such an excellent job of. And so this is another benefit that can come right out of the check and you don't have to ever think about it again. Okay. Here's a couple of little, uh, seven little numbers I want to talk about describing the, the policies. So for the example I gave before, that $50 per paycheck or $100 a month is a guaranteed level premium. So if you bought that policy when you were 30, when you were 40 years old or 50 years old or 60 years old, it's guaranteed that that premium contribution can never go higher. So if you're a younger person and you buy the policy now, when you get into your 50s or into your retirement age or whatever, it's guaranteed to remain the same. I know I said it three different ways, but I just wanted to get that point across. The second circle there says guaranteed increases in cash value. So as you are accumulating the money inside the cash value, it must go up every year and can never go down. No matter what happens in the marketplace, uh, and stocks, bonds, or anything else, your cash value is guaranteed to go up every year. The death benefit is guaranteed from day one. So if you were to start a policy during this open enrollment period, even before you contributed your first $50, um, that policy is in effect. It's guaranteed the entire death benefit from day one. So when you sign up for your policy and you get a $100,000 policy, it's guaranteed right from the start. The application is very simple. It's online. Um, there's going to be a link to the Mass Mutual portal on Prestige portal. And also, we will be sending everybody an email with a link to the, to the website, and it's very simple. Um, these policies are dividend eligible. So Mass Mutual is a mutual company, which means it's mutually owned by the policyholders. So we do not pay dividends to any stockholders because we don't have any. So we pay dividends to our policyholders. Our current dividend rate is 6%, and all whole life policies get paid by the mutual company at the end of the year. Um, your contributions and the dividends from Mass Mutual continue to compound that cash value, which is going to continue to increase the death benefit. In the past year, we added a chronic care benefit. A chronic care benefit is similar to a long-term care benefit, and I'm going to get into some details on that on that benefit. Also, there's another rider called the waiver of premium rider, which is sort of a disability rider. And that means that if you were ever to be disabled to the point where you couldn't work, um, Mass Mutual would waive your premiums and pay them for you forever. And the last and most important thing is these 
policies are permanent. So if you are still alive at 105, and God bless, I hope you, you can do so, this life insurance policy is still going to be with you. And it's portable for life, unlike some of those group policies. If you were to leave this company or retire, um, we would simply change from a payroll deduction to um, a monthly draft from your personal bank account, you're checking your savings, and it would still be $100, but you, to use that same example, and it would never go up and it would never change. So it's very easily portable. So this is something that you'll have forever. Okay. So just to talk about that chronic care endorsement. So if you had a $100,000 policy and you got to age 95 and you had some trouble um, health-wise and you needed um, to access that, we would give you in a lump sum the exactly 50% of where your death benefit has gone to. So if this person started with a $100,000 policy, by the time they were in their 90s, it might be over 200,000. So if you if you qualified for a chronic, chronic care, we would give you in a lump sum half of the death benefit. And how do you qualify? So you have to qualify being able to, if you had trouble doing two of the six, what they call activities of daily living. Those are walking, feeding, grooming, dressing, using the bathroom, bathing, transferring, stuff like that. So if you had trouble with that, we would give you half of the death benefit to help pay for medical bills or to build a ramp or to put in a stair ladder or whatever it is. Uh, or if you want to take the money and go and have a party, you could do that too. The other qualification would be any cognitive impairment, like de uh, dementia or something like that. And if you needed help um, getting around because you had trouble with your cognitive um, reasoning, we would be qualified for the um, chronic care endorsement. Okay. So employees can apply up for up to $250,000 Per year, and these are available in increments of 5,000. Employees must be between the age of 18 and 75 to qualify. Um, and again, um, up to the first 100,000 is guaranteed no matter what, and then up to 250 with the simple questions. Okay. Also included here is dependent coverage um, for your spouse and children and grandchildren. Now, the employee must purchase at least $25,000 on himself to, for their spouses and dependents to qualify. The only size face amount life policy for spouses is $25,000, not greater or lower. Uh, it is an employee benefit and the spouses are ancillary, so they're limited to that. Um, spouses are eligible if in between the ages of 18 and 60, the employees were 18 and 75, but your spouse must be between 18 and 60, and your children or grandchildren must be between the age of uh, two weeks and 26 years. Now, that 26 year limit means that that's when they first purchase it. So if you have a policy, for, if you have a 25 year old child, you can get a policy. It doesn't mean that the policy is gonna go away when they turn 26. It just means they must be 26 or younger in order to get the policy. Okay. Um, here's a quick little glimpse of how much these things cost. Um, many people overestimate the cost of life insurance. So you can see for a 25 year old, the cost per week would be $7 and 39 cents. And this example demonstrates a $50,000 policy. So 25 year old, $50,000 policy, $7 and 39 cents per week. And that would remain the same for the rest of that person's life. So when that person was 60, they're still only paying $7.39. And by the way, the death benefit that started at 50 would be higher by then. And if you were age 45 when you began the $50,000 policy, it'd be $18.81. And if you started at 55, it'd be $33. And again, that $33 would be level for the rest of your life. And underneath there, it shows you what the cash val value may be after 25 years. Now, this is the guaranteed minimum. This is not including dividends, okay? Mass Mutual's dividend rate is 6%. They have never not paid a dividend in, since before the Civil War. They paid div dividends through two world wars, through the Great Depression, and everything else. They have never missed a dividend. But for reasons, I can only show you the guaranteed minimum. So with dividends, after 25 years, those numbers would be um, higher than shown. 
Okay. Here is a quick look at the questions that are on the application. So if you if you elect for a hundred thousand, you don't have to answer these questions. But if you go for the two hundred fifty, you just have to say the answer these. First one is within the last twelve months, have you used tobacco? That's not a knockout question. It just means whether you're going to get tobacco rates or non-tobacco rates, and there's no test. Second question, are you actively at work at your usual and customary location, maintaining your normal work schedule? Just meaning, so long as you're actively at work and not out on disability, long-term or short-term, then you qualify. If you're out on disability, you just have to wait till you get back to work to enroll. And this is the, the question that limits you to the 100,000. During the last two years only, it's only a two-year look back, have you sought treatment for, been treated for, been diagnosed by a member of the medical profession having any of the following? And it's cancer, heart attack, coronary valve disease, alcohol or drug abuse, diabetes, for which the treatment is insulin. So if you're a diabetic and you're on metformin, you're good. You say no, or any other treatment. Uh, COPD or emphysema, stroke or TIAs, kidney disease, Parkinson's disease, paralysis, cirrhosis, age or HIV. And hopefully you have no experience with this in the last two years, and then you immediately qualify for 250. If unfortunately you've had some experience with this in the last two years, then you click yes, and then you'll see that you're limited to the 100,000 only. Okay. So how do you how do you how do you sign up? Um, everybody should be getting emails from Mass Mutual, and those emails are going to have my name, my email, my calendar link, and my um, direct phone number. So I can help you um, when you get that email click onto the link and walk through the process. There's also gonna be a link on the Prestige portal that brings you to the same thing. Your login is your social security number and the, your password is the year you were born. So you put those in and it's very easy to go through. There is a number for consultant, but I'd rather you just called me as we have uh, teamed up together here for a few years. Um, okay, thanks. Um, so that's it. So mass, mass mutual whole life insurance policy. You've got cash value. You've got waiver of premium benefit. You've got chronic care benefit and you have debt benefit. So these policies help you if, while you're alive with the cash value. If you get hurt with the waiver of premium, if you get sick with the chronic care, and if you predecease life expectancy or, or not, um, you'll have a death benef benefit for the rest of your life. Um, and I do know that sometimes people don't like to ask questions. So if you ever want to call or email me or get one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to reach out at any time. My contact information should be on the website somewhere. And that's it for me. So if anybody has any questions, I welcome the opportunity to answer them. Thank you so much, John. We It looks like all of the questions were addressed in your presentation. We only have a remaining question regarding benefits for Kathleen um, in reference to Oxford. Uh, are there is there any change with Oxford if the member goes to a hospital for a test? Um, specifically, the coinsurance provision and whether it's still there. I believe I have sent an invitation to Kathleen to unmute. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> um, so can you repeat the question for me? Absolutely. For Oxford plans, if the member goes to a hospital for a test, is there still a coinsurance? It depends on the plan. But yes, several of the plans still have a coinsurance for uh, diagnostics, so MRIs or CAT scans or X-rays, uh, and in some cases lab work. So that, but but not every single plan. It depends on the plan you're offered, but several of the plans do have that. Okay, very much appreciated. Thank you so much, Kathleen and John, for these presentations, and thank you everyone for joining us. You can view this webinar along with other open enrollment webinar recordings on our Open Enrollment Resource Center at www.prestigepeo.com backslash open enrollment. You can also check out helpful guides and tutorial videos there. 
Finally, remember to download our Prestige Go mobile app for access to your benefits information and support from your HR team members on the go. Thank you all, and we'll see you next time.